Hello everyone, today we are taking a look at Rhino for Grasshopper and especially the Maelstrom commands. So taking Grasshopper for a side right now, so this is basically what you can achieve with it. You basically can have a certain amount of objects, then you have a middle point and this middle point basically warps the thing around it. Um, to have a quick demonstration for this in Rhino, uh, we just make a few uh, rectangles here and we just extrude them quickly and we add a few of them more and then we use the maelstrom commands we use those objects to deform have the middle point have a certain radius a second radius and then um, like an angle uh, when it like transforms and this will be the end result um, obviously you can make this again like this that And the thing is, like right now, I cannot really use this geometry anymore because it's already so warped and so changed. So it is nice to have a backwards compatible way of uh, reaching this this as well. So um, in the script that I'm showing you today, uh, it is something similar uh, like that, um, but it's more usable for uh, like in, in other parts. So here. Uh, this is like the end result and uh, we just like baked the end thing but I'm gonna hide this for now so basically what we're having is we're having uh, just a certain grid it could be any kind of geometry it doesn't really matter what it is and then this grid um, has a has a middle point and then this middle point gets transformed uh, with some certain parameters that we see here and those things will be the next route upwards and we're talking here as well about having uh, the right order of commands because if you use uh, for example extrude boxes first and then you are going to transform them the amount of computation time will be in increasing so I'm going to show you as well how to do it in the right order so um, we're gonna do it uh, make this follow over again so you can show like a see a step-by-step -step progress so the first we want to create a certain ge geometry that we're going to have um, in our case we could obviously import something from Rhino but I would like to create something completely in the grasshopper environment so um, we're going to use under the sets no sorry under a vector grid um, square we're going to use uh, that command here and this allows us to create as a, a certain grid uh, over the area so this would be like our base grid and then obviously you can change this, the size of each of the parcels in order to um, change this to our needs so what we're going to do is that we're going to transform this and then extrude uh, the things upwards. I will also show you it, it, how it would be the other way around, and how it would um, completely crush the performance of our file. And we're also going to use uh, dams, that is a way of basically holding up certain parts to the next one, but we we'll get there. So this will be our, our main uh, like cells that we have, and if we're going to use the maelstrom commands, um, it, which is actually under transform and then under morph and uh, maelstrom there is also certain other things that we can use maybe in future videos but we're going to use a maelstrom for now because I think it's quite an interesting um, way to start it so we're gonna have the geometry which is uh, which are those cells here um, right now it takes just uh, the plane here in the beginning so you have to move it uh, here in the middle um, or in any other point. So what one way you could do is we could just uh, define a point and set this point here and use this as the main plane. I'm gonna hide this one here for now. And now we also have um, the other controls of the first and uh, second radius. So we're gonna use some inputs uh, ourselves here as well so we have more control over it so I'm gonna ok 
kind of like this maybe. So we have a nice, so like this is the first angle that uh, creates the first things and this is like how far it basically goes uh, from the radius from that point. Um, actually, let me, I want to see if they're actually even possible of two. Ah, yeah. No, actually it wouldn't be, but okay. Anyway, let's get this back. And um, then we also can change the angle uh, itself of the basically how much you want it to transform, as you see, can be quite drastic. <coughs> okay. So, yeah, zero being just like the base plane. And the rigidity basically um, would give you a second option as those things will not be transformed, but they will stay the same way. You can like activate or deactivate that. So we just set Boolean true. You see, you have it like the own uh, single piece that will be still uh, the same, same way. We're not going to do that. So right now we are having our main base grids and we would like to um, extrude that upwards now. So the way you're going to do is we're just going to, um, we have this geometry here, those 1505 uh, different things. So, and we're going to use a certain like random component in order for it to um, be extruded upwards. So we're going to just going to flatten that and now we have the list length of 1505 uh, 1, and so we need 1505 different um, heights let's say and so we're just gonna go from here do it like this make a series that creates uh, an array from one one to this uh, length but we're gonna um, in decrease this, the amount of steps in order for it to be more like small and right now, if you would just extrude it, the problem would be it would probably be like one after the other. It would look like a like a pyramid almost. Let me just show this quickly. Yeah, also, we have to use the uh, Z command in order for it to go in the Z direction upwards. So right now you see it will, well, maybe it's gonna be the way you want it, but uh, I want to have it more distributed and I, as well I want to have it like more uh, a smaller number so I'm gonna just change this quickly as well it looks more like it and I will also want to have it randomized so a way to do is actually to buy um, doing the command of jitter that can just randomize this list anyway so the output gets randomized and they get thrown all, all, all over the place um, we might also want to add a certain starting height to it so we're gonna reduce this even further for it to be like more in a, a viewable human scale field. So this looks already like quite something. And then we also want to uh, cap that as well. Which you would have here. So that's like one way to do it. Um, the thing is, for example, as I mentioned before, if you want to change something here, let's say this to 25, it will calculate now the whole this thing again and then extruding the things and then capping the things again. So it will actually take quite quite a, quite some time in order for it to be finished. So this is like one, like three and a half seconds almost. And uh, a, a good way to combat that is to use data dams, um, which basically uh, give you the option to uh, change the things that we have here and then once you are sure with with this um, amount of things that you have here you click this button and it will go into the next iteration or the next uh, process that has to calculate 
through the things. So that's a very good way to combat that because if we would um, not have that, uh, I think a workflow would be pretty pretty ugly anyway. And um, then again, if if I'm thinking, okay, I wanna I wanna change this point to another place like this, like that. I don't know exactly what it would be exactly. And obviously, change all the all the things around. Yeah. Um. As well, if I would, for example, would use the same command, but I would extrude those things already in the beginning. So, for example, I would just take those two things here, and I would use those things as the base. And that actually might have been, been a mistake now because uh, I didn't graft, I didn't flatten the tree. So it could be that now of every, th those are those single things, it might calculate those things all over. So this might take a while now. Yes, so it took around two minutes to complete it, so I just cut the video quickly. Um, so for example, if we have the finished, like that's like the main thing, and we want to now um, make the maelstrom, you will see that the amount of calculation time is actually would be like here, like three seconds, and in the other case, um, yeah, it actually would like result in, in the same calculation time. But the problem is if you would like to change the diameter beforehand, like we did here, it would need to calculate through this, through this, and um, only then it could do that, which takes always 1.2 seconds, and here it will only take 30 milliseconds. This is something, even though it would be uh, the same results, or like almost at least similar to the results, um, I would recommend you to do it like this way around. So um, yeah, and when you have the final result, you can always just bake it. And then if you uh, have like some kind of render engine, you can rather quickly just render it out of the, the viewport and you have a very nice um, way of um, knowing how those things can be uh, made or used for your own advantage. So yes, thank you very much and um, see you in the next one.